in this painting tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint this pretty hellebore flower with easy to follow steps so even if you're a beginner you can join in. Okay, welcome to my studio and as you can see I've done a simple outline of the hellebore flower like this and I've traced it down just by printing it out, scribbling on the back and doing it this way with my 0.5 mechanical pencil. Now you can of course draw it freehand if you want to but I do provide you with a free traceable line drawing and a reference photograph and I'll tell you later on how you can get them. The paper I'm using is by Etcher and it's 300 GSM cold press which means it has a texture and the paints are largely from Schmincke. Please use the colours that you have though and I'm just going to talk you through the colours that I've chosen here. We have chromium yellow hue lemon, ruby red, that's very similar to maybe a permanent rose or something like that if you have that within your kit, quinacridone magenta, which is that beautiful magenta tone which has a transparency along with quinacridone purple, perylene green, and uh, perylene violet and sap green by Windsor and Newton. But as I say, use the colours that you have. I'm using a selection of different size brushes today, um, a number six spotter from Rosemary & Co, number five round and some other spotter brushes that I have, but please use the ones that you have within your own kit. So watercolour is all about building up your colours slowly and carefully. So we're going to be working first of all with a mix of ruby red with a tiny bit of ruby red with chromium yellow hue lemon. So notice at this point how watery the colours are and because you've asked me to we're going to be leaving the reference photo in screen. So to begin with and for speed we're going to be working wet in wet which simply means I'm going to be taking the water just to the pencil line where I want to drop the paint in. This can go all over the petals like this as you can see apart from the central area. I'm using my number six spotter for this just for speed and I've now switched to my number five round brush because it has a really fine point. The colour that I'm dropping in here is ruby red with chromium yellow hue This chromium yellow hue is, is very similar to a cadmium lemon, so if you have that, then please use that. Notice that this hellebore is backlit, which means that I've taken the photograph with the light shining through to give it a, a little sort of edge of transparency. So you can see that it looks like the light is, is coming through it and making it a little bit more interesting. So now that our first wash is in place, you can see me using the mix of ruby red and I'm just dropping it in with my number five round like this, only to the outside element. And you can see how it's naturally blurring into that damp paint, giving it that really soft look. Really, really pretty and so easy to do. Now watercolour is all about building up our layers slowly and carefully and if you are new here I highly recommend that you watch this video all the way through so that you can see how that process unfolds. I know with watercolour painting it can go through that sort of ugly duckling stage where you think it's wrong but trust me it's all part of the process. You'll notice that I have got a little puddle of water in the middle of my palette here. The reason I'm using this, and this is really important, rather than dipping my brush into my, my water, is simply because by cleaning my brush in my water jar, it just means that I'm flooding the brush with water and creating a big puddle of water on my paper, which I don't want. So by using this tiny little puddle in my palette here, I'm just dropping in the correct amount of water, making it super easy to apply. It would have been sensible for me to leave all of these petals dry before I dropped it in, um, as you can see, it has splurged a little bit onto the adjoining petals, but they're easily removed like this. So if you do want to paint your petals one by one, that's absolutely fine, but I just did it like this for speed. And you can see how I'm using the tip of my brush to just manipulate that paint and push it where I want to go, right up to that pencil line. So already we can see that it's got this beautiful translucency and we can start to build up the colours later. Now this is my number, five, my number two size flat brush and I use this for blending and lifting out. It's also very good for just um, softening any edges that have dried that are quite hard. Everything's dry and I've cleaned up my palette so I have a mix here of quinacridone purple and I'm applying it to the areas that you can see but make sure that everything's dry at this stage. So 
So the little palette that I'm using here, the ceramic palette on my side, it's got plenty of wells for me to mix my colours in and I um, actually bought it from Jackson's Art Supplies. It's made by Etcher, comes in a pack of two. Um, if it's something that interests you, I'll link it in the description box below along with all the other materials that I'm using today. So just continuing on with the process using quinacridone purple like this and blending it through with my brush. I do have a particular way of applying my paint and blending it, and I have done a separate video on this, and I will link it in the screen above, so if it interests you, you can click through and watch it after this video. A watery mix of perylene and violet next, and you can see where I'm applying this color, using my reference photograph as a guide, staying out of that lighter area within the middle. Now I did say at the start of this video that I provide you with a free reference photograph and line drawing to accompany this tutorial, indeed all of our tutorials here on YouTube, and you can obtain them by joining our Facebook group. Well there are a few ways you can obtain the line drawings. First of all, join our Facebook group um, where you can obtain all the line drawings and reference photographs to our YouTube tutorials. I will link it in the description box underneath this video. Please consider joining us there. We are an amazing community and you can post up your finished paintings from our tutorials, get some feedback from me and our other fantastic members. So I will link that in the description box below, but you can also obtain our line drawings by staying right to the end of this video where I'll put it right at the end for you to do a screenshot and you can print it out that way. But that's not all. We're also putting it on our community tab these days. So if that's something that interests you, you can go over to our homepage on YouTube, slide across to the community tab, do a screenshot and print it out that way. So you've got three different ways of getting the line drawn if you prefer to trace your drawings down that way with a simple outline. But of course, we also have the um, photograph on screen for you as well. So the colour that I have mixed here is ruby red and I'm just dropping this in as you can see here using that pencil line as just a guide. When you trace down your pencil drawn or if you do decide to draw it freehand, keep the lines really simple. You don't want to draw in your details. Remember it's just an outline to guide you. I've now completed the process on all of the other petals and I've got a mix here of perylean green. The little leaf that you see here on the top, we're actually painting the underside. So I'm dropping in a very, very watery mix of perylene green here, and I'm using a sap green mix just to go on the stem like this, and dropping in perylene violet, as you can see, just to give it a bit of depth. So that's just sap green with perylene violet. And this one here is just sap green on its own. And now that this petal, this little leaf is dry, we can start to put this one in as well. But make sure that it's dry, otherwise the colour will bleed into the wet paint. I'm just dropping in a, a slightly thicker mix here of sap green with the tiny bits of perylene and violet and working around that central vein. Now there are a couple of ways that you can do this. You can either add negative, you can either paint negatively around that central area or you can of course use bleed proof white which I decide to do later on. Everything's dry again and now we can mix a thicker mix of perylene and violet. So if you want a thicker mix all you need to do is just add less water. We also have a mix of chromium yellow hue lemon, which I'm applying to the central area as you can see. Notice at this point how thick the paint is. So we have a lot less water at this stage so that we can control the paint better. I'm just dropping in a tiny bit of that perylene violet whilst it's still wet and notice once again how it blurs naturally into that pigment. Just using the tip of my brush and I'd forgotten this little area here so we're just dropping in some pink as before and to this element here. Keeping out of the white area right at the tip. Using my number two spotter I'm just going over the first wash that we did making sure that it's dry of course and you can see how I'm leaving little gaps within the first wash to make it look a little bit more interesting. Continuing the process, working around the central area and taking that wash right into the little sort of pattern that we have on the petals. And I'll continue the process for the other petals. Mm -hmm. 
Just use any small brush that you have to do this. Something with a fine point would be ideal. But you can see how I'm leaving little gaps and just creating that pattern using my photograph as a guide. And this is just um, ruby red. And just continuing the process for the other petals. You can see how I'm using the paint that's left on the brush at this stage to create um, a little bit more pattern as I'm working through. Just following up those veins. I'm not putting all of them in, I'm just giving the illusion of the veins being there. I'm working with a dry brush, I'm just giving that kind of wiggly motion on the paper. You can see how natural that looks. So just continuing the process like this, using the ruby red, and of course you could use permanent rose as I said earlier on, and the central area like this, staying out of the white area, just going over the area that we painted originally. Now we are over on Instagram at The Wonders of Watercolour, so do take a look. We post behind the scenes stuff and a bit of humour going on there as well, and do consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification. I just want to take a moment to tell you about our Patreon, which at the time of filming has four different membership levels, from mini weekly videos of doodles, vlogs and podcasts, to full length botanical painting tutorials, which are exclusive to Patreon and are of course ad free. If this is something that interests you, I've put a link in the description below, plus it's a way for you to support my channel. So back to the job in hand. This time I'm using the thicker mix of Perilee and Violet as you can see here and I'm outlining the central area like this working around the yellow uh, middle area of the plant. So you can see how I'm applying the Perilee and Violet like this working around the yellow areas that we painted in earlier on. Now remember, these washes will still need to be built upon, but we're just putting this down so we can see exactly where we're going with this darker element. If you are enjoying this video, then please feel free to give it a thumbs up. It's a way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content and I would really appreciate it. So, okay, working around this area like this using the Perilene Violet. And I've noticed how thick the mixture is on my palette here. I've used a lot of paint, but it's not a dry mix. It gives me, you can see how it's given me the ability to move the paint on the paper. Cleaning my brush in that little puddle on the middle there and just blending it through into that yellow area like this. Doing a smaller area at a time means that I can take my time to work through these little spiky bits. I have a watered down mix here of quinacridone purple because I did feel that certain elements of the plant were um, just needed that little bit of depth of colour. Just taking this opportunity to add some detail and some depth of colour to the outside edges here and you can see the colours that I'm picking up on my palette. So this would be, per, uh, sorry, ruby red, 
I'm used to calling it uh, ruby red. It's very similar to permanent rose. And I'm adding a little bit of water to it here. You can see that there is a darker element or darker value on the outside edge of this, um, this petal. It, where the light is shining through, there's obviously going to be a darker value there. So once again, everything's dry. I've cleaned down my palette and I have here Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martins. So I'm going to be applying that a little bit later. So this mix is perylene green and perylene violet that you see on the left hand side there and it's a watered down version and you can see where I'm adding this to the outside edge of what would be the central vein and remember this is the underside of the leaf and we're just given the illusion of um, the kind of light hitting it so we don't want to take this color everywhere just sort of loosely following the pattern that's on the photograph here so it's, we know it's a green colour, but because it's the underside, it has this kind of gentle, sort of purpley hue to it, like a greyish tone. So this will be sap green with a tiny bit of perylene and violet that I'm adding to the inside edge of the stem here and blending it out as before. So once again, I'm using the darker value here. So this will be perylene green and working around that central vein. I wanted to give this little leaf here a little bit of dimension. If you look closely at the reference photograph, you'll see that there are many, many veins in this, but I didn't want to paint them all in. I just wanted to give the illusion of there being veins within it and stop it from looking flat, which is why you can see me negatively painting around that central vein. There are lots of different ways, as I said, to do this. You could use masking fluid, which I'm not keen on, negative painting, or of course you could use a white gouache or Dr. P.H. Bartins. We'll talk about that later. So I'm just using this mix of perylene violet and perylene green just to enhance that little tip there. And we have sap green here on the bottom leaf working around like so. Add in the darker value as it settles into the paper. So this would be perylene green with sap green or just use any greens that you have. It doesn't have to be um, exactly the colors that I'm using, as I said before. I always say use what you have because it's important that you utilize your own paints. You don't have to go out and buy everything that I'm using. Okay, so next up, we're going to be doing a glaze of that color there, just to soften any edges. By glaze, all I mean is by going over the washes that are already in place. And again, strengthening up the central area like this, using the tip of my brush. We can keep building up these darker values because we've put our washes down in very, very watery layers. It gives us the ability to build them up slowly without them going muddy or looking overworked. Carry on building up those colors until you're happy with the depth of color that you have. Now, of course, the center will need tidying up. At the moment, we're still applying those darker values to put those shapes in place and continuing to build up these colors here. I have put the ruby red here. I felt actually after doing it, it was looking a little bit pinky, perhaps um, something like the perylene violet would have been better, but it's okay, it works just as well. Using the tip of my brush here to just go over the outside edges of the petals here and just add a little bit of texture like this. Notice how I'm wiggling my brush pull in some shapes and a little bit of veining. And you can continue to do this on the other petals. As I said earlier on, I'm not going to put all the detail in, it's just to give the illusion of there being some detail on each of the petals. This is the quinacridone purple that you can see me applying now. Notice how I'm blending it through.
Notice how I'm painting in the veins by extending the areas that we painted in earlier. So just gently take those veins up, but keep an eye on your strength of color at this point. When you apply your veins, as you hit the lighter areas within your plant, add a little bit more water so that they look really, really natural. And just continue in the process. So this is perylene violet to add a little bit of detail here. This is add darker values. Now you can see me using the Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. At the very start of this tutorial, I wasn't sure whether I was going to be using it. And if you don't have this, don't worry. You could use a white gouache or even um, any white paint that you have within your palette. I just felt that this needed a little bit of sharpening up. As you can see, it does work really well to create a little bit of detail here and there. And I have been using it quite a lot lately in my tutorials. So um, it is something I really recommend using for the finer detail. As you can see, I'm just adding it to the center here. Although we know that the element that I'm painting on is yellow, by creating this, by giving it this um, sort of extra level of detail, we can now let that dry and paint around it with a perylene violet color. So by adding that Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White and then painting around those areas with the perylene violet, it really makes them pop off the page and you can still see that yellow color underneath. I'm going to stop talking now and just let you watch the rest of this video in peace. Remember to stay until the end where I'm going to be putting up the line drawing for you to freeze frame and print out. And I'll also put a playlist of other botanical paintings that I think may interest you. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. See you soon.